Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. Um, if you see me adjusting, it's because my darling sister blessed me with a tripod to hold the phone while I do my walk messages, and I was totally surprised. I just made a passing comment that the little holder that attaches to the back of a chair was kind of a pain and I wanted to get a tripod so it was easier and I came home from work yesterday and there was a tripod on the front porch and she just said I wanted to help support the walk so I was really surprised at that. Um, anyway, today we're talking about some of the things that go on in a church family that um, on the surface they seem to be really bad for the spread of the gospel and fulfilling the Great Commission but in some ways it kind of turns out to be a benefit but it's also something that we need to be mindful of because it's it's sin in our lives and we need to be aware of that so we're starting off in James chapter 3 verse 13 and this is what it says who is wise and understanding among you let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and evil, every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So let's break this down. What does it say? It's basically saying that if we harbor, if inside your heart you're feeling that envy and that selfish ambition and you're trying to get more and more recognition within your church family, it's not healthy for that church family. If that's the reason that you're serving Christ, it's not healthy. And verse 15 says, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. So, as, and it also causes disorder and every evil practice. But on the flip side, sometimes we see people that seem to be doing that and we don't really understand why they're doing it. And we can jump to the wrong conclusions. When I was involved in a church, um, this was more than a year ago, I really felt a calling to teach and to help people build their relationship with Christ. And I had a lot of ideas in how to make that happen, but I thought that the only way that could happen would be through my church. I thought I had to be given the opportunity to teach. And as time went out, time worked itself out, um, a bunch of us left the church and we started his church. And then at his church, I had the opportunity to teach. And somehow, that calling never subsided. It felt like it was never being fulfilled. Here I am, I'm preaching on Sunday morning and I thought that was what God was calling me to do and the calling was still there. The urging was still there. The Holy Spirit was still saying, you need to teach. You need to teach people to build their relationship with Christ. And I didn't know how to make that happen. However, God's timing is perfect. And God knew exactly what was coming, and he knew exactly how he was going to use it. Then the pandemic hit. His church went completely virtual, and I was, um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher by trade. I'm also teaching on Zoom five days a week, and I got more and more comfortable with being on camera. I got more comfortable with being on Facebook Live because of his church, and the walk started to, uh, God started to show me what the walk was going to look like. And it really wasn't out of selfish ambition that I was trying to tell others what I was doing on the side, outside of church with therapy dog work and all of that. It was that I knew I needed to teach. I knew the Holy Spirit was calling me to teach, 
but I didn't know how to make it happen. I didn't know how to have an audience to teach. And then through the pandemic, I started to realize I can do this 100% on my own. And honestly, I could have started it 10 years ago, but I didn't understand how to make it happen. I didn't understand what God wanted it to look like. And when he first told me about the walk, I thought it was just gonna be a Sunday morning message. It wasn't until the very last minute that I started to realize, no, this is six days a week. And so sometimes that's how God's using people. And you may look at their behavior and say, oh, that's selfish ambition, that's envy. I didn't really have that. I didn't have the envy. I didn't have that I wanted to promote myself. It was, I have to get an opportunity to teach because I know that's what the Holy Spirit's telling me to do. And I didn't realize that I could create that opportunity to teach on my own. And I didn't have to have that platform within a church. So be careful that you're not pointing your finger at people because you don't know what the Holy Spirit's calling them to do and you don't really know what's motivating them from their heart. Make sure that you understand, uh, make sure that you're not jumping to those conclusions. And I really wasn't trying to promote myself. I was trying to get that opportunity so I could fulfill what the Holy Spirit was calling me to do. And it was a deep desire in my heart for many, many years. I would say that that desire started more than 10 years ago. I just didn't know how to make it happen. So then when we get to verse seven, 17, that's when um, we start to see this in a new way. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. That was where I was coming from, but I know a lot of people looked at my behavior and they thought it was that bitter envy and that selfish ambition. So be careful about judging others and be careful about deciding what their ambition is when you don't really know what's down deep down in their heart. You don't know what the Holy Spirit is telling them. Then in verse, um, or then we're flipping over to Philippians chapter one, verse 15, and there's a little bit more about this envy and this rivalry. When the Holy Spirit's calling you to do something, be careful that you're not turning it into a rivalry because that's unhealthy for the church. Be careful that you're, you're giving everyone that opportunity to fulfill the calling that the Holy Spirit has on their hearts as well. Because you know what? God's gonna make plenty of room. God's gonna, if God's calling more than one person to do the same thing, it's because he's about to expand that ministry. And it's great because that team is being formulated. And we need to be aware of that. So um, Philippians chapter one, verse 15 says, it is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. 16, the latter, that's the others that do it out of goodwill, do so out of love, knowing that I am here, put here for the defense of the gospel. Verse 17, the former, that's the people that are doing it out of envy and rivalry, preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. Verse 18, but what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. So the bottom line is, we need to rejo be rejoicing that Christ is assembling a team of people. Yeah, they may all be called to do the same thing for, the, for that time, and it's because God is thinking bigger than human beings. And we need to be prepared for that. We need to be making sure that we don't have God inside this box and saying this is the limit to what God will do because there is no limit to what God will do. We need to be ready to expand those ministries and allow the team to grow so that we can reach more people for Christ. Maybe you're being called to do something and you're thinking, you know what, there's somebody in my church that already does that. That doesn't mean that there isn't an opportunity for you to do that. 
let somebody know what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do. And you know what? If I had done that, I would have saved myself a lot of heartbreak. If I had just gone to the pastor and said, I really feel like the Holy Spirit is calling me to do this and I don't feel like I have an avenue to do it, will you please help me see how this can happen? It probably would have saved a lot of turmoil in, a, in the church. If you're being called to do something and you think, you know what, there's already somebody in that spot, so I'm not gonna be able to fulfill that calling. Don't shut the door. If the Holy Spirit is calling you to do it, he's going to create a way for you to do it. And that happened for me during the pandemic. And it can also happen for you. As you go into your prayer closet today, keep that in mind. Pray about what the Holy Spirit's calling you to do and pray about who you need to tell about that so that they can understand what it is that you're being called and maybe they can help you. Maybe they're aware of an avenue that that can happen that you're not aware of. Don't shut the door just because you think somebody else is already doing it because it could be that God's about to expand that ministry in a way you didn't anticipate and he needs more people in, that, in order to expand it. And you're a part of that team. Really pray over that as you go in your prayer closet today. Look at those scriptures where it talks about the envy and the rivalry, but yet it also talks about the fact that people may be doing it out of love and they may be doing it because they're, they want to help expand that gospel and the Holy Spirit is truly calling them to that. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.